What's up guys? Welcome back to Print Hammer. We are going to be doing a tutorial video today. We are going to be looking at Chi2Box Slicer and supporting your builds. see a lot of these out there, uh, but none of them are very respectful of your time. They are supporting every single piece to make sure that it is, I don't know, avoiding people giving them shit in the comments. I've printed way too many Warhammer 40k prints at this point. I am not worried about um, someone saying that I've under supported, over supported. I know what supportage will yield good prints and what kind of supportage is too much and what's going to yield a, a little bit of bending. We're going to look in that right now. I've got the Ballistas Dreadnought here. Just go ahead and find your files, pull them up. Make sure you've got your settings printer selected. You're definitely going to do the settings beforehand. We're going to do another video for the settings. This one's just going to be focused on the supports. It doesn't look like we have quite enough room for all this, but we're going to, I think we're going to make it work. This file is the new Ballistas Dreadnought. It's not out yet. One of the, this and the Terminators are the last two pieces I need to have the Leviathan set done. So we're going to go ahead and get this one supported. The files we bought, uh, got some supported files released yesterday. Uh, but we imported them and they were all rigid so uh, they were i think saved in an improper format or maybe not for cheetah box i do have lychee but we're just we're going to go ahead and use these for this video it's a perfect time for that first thing we're going to work on is orientation before we get to sports that's probably one of the most if not the most important part of supporting these uh, you're going to want to orientate each of these pieces to give you the best chance of printing properly these flat pieces you want to be in with any of them really you want to be worried about bending these circles that you're putting the various arms legs in you don't want those to be warping or else you'll have to trim them with your exacto knife before they go in so first one here we'll take the base this one's really easy we're just gonna rotate this 45 and leave it right there I'll probably just save a little bit of time here drop it down a little And we're going to get them all oriented first before we start putting the supports in. So very important here, 45 degrees is going to reduce the amount of uh, weight at each angle that is being supported. So an easy way to try and understand it is uh, early on you want to see this and imagine it printing. Obviously it's going to be uh, in the reverse manner like this, but it's good to see and imagine where the weight is distributed and what causes those failures, which is almost always weight oriented, right? Uh, obviously the supports, but uh, the supports are tested. Their strength is measured by the amount of weight and resistance against them. So uh, first thing we want to do is make sure that right off the bat, see, there is uh, as, as flat a surface as we can get. And on a circle, that is just going to have to be Sorry, we're focused on this guy right here. This is a terrible angle. I'm gonna get us back forward. Um, getting yourself oriented in here is gonna take a little bit, but once you once you start to use it more and more, you'll definitely feel more comfortable. So we're gonna to wanna to get it angled. 45 degrees is almost always uh, the best you can do with something flat. Uh, so this is gonna give us a nice even surface increasing the resistance without overloading it by just, if you were to take this in, and run it flat and you watch this build, obviously we're going to have this up on supports, but the supports under this, all at once, everything, everything everywhere all at once is, a, is being supported. And this is gonna cause big issues. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do with flat surfaces, you're gonna think, it just makes sense. I'm gonna put it flat. The, the build plate's flat, the vat is flat, the, the, the object I'm building is flat, why would I not put it flat? It is terrible for, for your uh, supports to try and uh, give you a good final print. You will see almost always that, that this is something like this is going to fail you. Uh, just even a little bit of angling uh, will go such a long way. So we are going to go with a little more than this surface so we can work with it there pull this other stuff should have done this earlier this is tedious now that we've got it flat 
nice 45 degree angle. You don't need to overdo it, especially with stuff that has more details on it or, or perfectly 45 degree angled. The, the stuff that's most important is the heavy weighted stuff. Something else you need to bear in mind here is the side with the most detail or the least details needs to be facing down, receiving the supports. So the supports are coming from the bottom of the plate here. This side, this side, obviously the bottom of this base, uh, this side of the missiles attach on top, so we're probably better off doing this. This, this is going to be very difficult to print. Uh, you're, you're putting all of the weight, by the time the build ends, by the time you're here, printing your last few layers, all of this weight is on this one little point. With lighter stuff, it's not going to be as big a deal, but again, if you have the time, if you're supporting it, you're gonna be here anyways, you might as well just do it right. So this is just, we're going slow here obviously to try and make sure you guys can follow along. But once you learn this stuff, you can get moving pretty quick. I, like everyone else, far prefer the pre-supported files, but you need to know how to do this yourself because a lot of times, I'd even say maybe majority or at least half of the time, these pre-supported files are not even gonna all print correctly. They're, they're more focused on their sculpts than they are uh, getting you the, the best supported file. So these legs are probably not thick enough in any specific spot to worry about hollowing out. Um, this off the foot building, not a huge fan of it. I think I'm gonna go off the butt here like this. This seems like a good orientation. We wanna always try to keep uh, the sharp angles. See how these if you have these angled down and, and just at one degree, less than 45 degrees where they would need support, where gravity would be working against them instead of for them, uh, then you're gonna need to add supports and Cheetu Box will add them for you or show you that they are needing them. We'll go over that in a second. Um, but you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna be adding supports to your fine details, which gives a chance for you to, when you pull them off, to pull some of the detailing off with them. Uh, so with this bigger one, we don't have a lot of the fine detailing. I think this is probably the best angle we want to get uh, Remember I said 45 degrees, so we want to mind the entire figure here So I'm trying to get everything with some upward angle here. This is a little bit Straight up and if you can get something to orient straight up uh, Gravity prints are pretty solid like when most of the the build is printing off of gravity and not needing the support uh, it's a lot less failures obviously because you're not relying on a skinny little support So you'll see that more when we have the supports in mm -mm -mm, These little ones here You're gonna be using small supports, so it's still important to get them right Because obviously if you use even just medium-sized supports, you're gonna pull the detailing off All right, so we'll move this one out of the way and this guy out of the way We're looking at this big one here. So right now this one's already they were pre hollowed out and That's gonna be something very very important to do with your uh, Bigger pieces not just to save resin, but to reduce the weight on this thing and uh, To something more manageable don't leave a bunch of a big blob of resin in there obviously take the time to drain it to the point where there is only clear uh, isopropyl alcohol or water depending on what, what you're curing your resin with or cleaning your resin with mini's not going to be like exploding on the battlefield you just need to make sure you take the extra time to fill it with that isopropyl alcohol shake it around i'm not trying to save that much in resin just hollowing it in general is going to make you the big savings and uh give you the reduction in weight so i probably go around like 2.6 2.9 3.2 millimeters somewhere around there and uh, this one is uh, looks like a bit thicker than that and eh, probably around three three and a half i didn't hollow this one myself um so uh after you hollow it very 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 important do not forget this you need to dig two holes two holes in the figure to one drain the resin from the inside imagine when you are building this there is resin accumulating it is slowly building in these little vats here you are dumping it back into your vat of resin when it comes back up any little gappage that is created here before it's sealed allows resin in here the resin does not have a way to get back out 
unless you have holes created. This one comes with the holes already in the arms here. This is where you're going to want to look to put them somewhere that is being attached with another limb or something or on a butt that is not going to be seen or attached to a base. The weight will be something we're going to mind, but we're, we're going to go over that when we get to the supports. I think we're going to make it happen. Crazy enough. Um, we're going to go right here and we'll fix from there. Good enough. We can always adjust the positioning after the supports have been laid. Doesn't matter if they're overlapping, all that nonsense. First ones you're going to want to select are the ones that we're doing on light supports. Uh, definitely using auto supports here for the baseline. I'm not in the field of laying 150 manual supports. It's just going to drain you. All right, so we're going to switch it to light for the auto supports here. Uh, the density of supports is the most important thing. Uh, this is going to create the raft at the bottom. So we're going to leave the density right at 60. I think that's about fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run the auto supports. Make sure that your Z lift height is up. Turn off this little eyeball. Turn off the supports. We don't need to see them. We know that they exist beyond this. And let's just start right here. For 60%, it really supported the shit out of this thing. Um, so we're going to grab a couple of these. Get reoriented. We want to find where the bottom is here, where it is first touching the build plate. And we are definitely going to want to take the bottom of this. And the edging is super important on a lot of these wider models and you'd be super surprised at how often a figure looks completely well supported almost over supported but just the sides are not even on the very edges are not supported well and everything will print perfect but they'll just be a little warpage um all right so we're good with this on this figure where it gets red is where gravity is no longer your friend they are starting to hang over and where the dots are the little gray lines are where gravity has fully betrayed you and it needs a support. Very simple concept. You see this line, you support this line directly, not support around it, not, you know, maybe comfort in its time of need later. You need to support it right now. Get to it, support it. All right, so we are going with some mediums here. So now we're going to go up the sides here. Uh, so that's pretty much all I would do. We're probably well beyond what I would bother with. If we're doing my fast version, I'm going to hit that light and then uh, delete every other along the side like I did and just drop these in pretty quick, maybe about 70% of what I actually did there. All right, so we'll move on to the smaller ones here. These are pretty easy. Auto support's gonna handle most of the work here. Um, you could probably just go with something like this if you wanted to. Um, we'll definitely do some mediums on this guy. This is interesting why it's showing. There's no red here, but this is obviously where our gray lines are going to be right there. So we did still get that corner. You got to get those settings locked in. It was it was mind blowing when I started. You know, at my first response to this I, I just didn't know I didn't know that there was another side so I just assumed that the the failures I was reaching were due to support issues and I was just more supports more supports more supports I need more supports and like it, that's not the fix and then uh, come over here and throw a few mediums uh, in the mix and, and really just done that's why I just I just look at it when I'm done just you know sort of think about see where the supports have been placed sometimes this is a good way to you just pull it back and sometimes you'll just look and see that you remove supports in the spot and never went back in and put them down um, it doesn't look like I've done that really here anywhere so I think these are good um, one issue I have had with cheetah boxes sometimes when you do have this done uh, and then try to create another these just disappear so I'm gonna go ahead and just save selected models now that they're done just keep it right under here light stuff 
All right, so the two heavy boys, bring them in. We're gonna do these a little bit faster now that you guys have oriented yourself with this a little bit. So, we're gonna switch to medium supports. I'm gonna go with 55. I don't wanna over support some of these detailed areas when I can just run some lights on them. Um, so first thing we'll do is grab the bottom of the model and delete these supports off it so we can throw some heavies. These guys can handle the heavy. The details on these are, you know, not super fine. So we can throw a heavy in there. All right, so that should be good. More than enough. Um, and that's really it. So many successful prints in a row with such simple, I guess we'll talk about the skate really quick. Um, there's a few different options that you can do uh, when creating the bottom. Uh, I see a lot of people that go with the skate. I don't, it's no difference, right? The, the most important thing is that it, it has some density to it. it. Don't under, this is gonna be in your settings as well. Uh, this one of the more important settings. Uh, let's go back here. So we can look at them. See, just what I was talking about. They're gone. So just these two are left, but we saved it, so we'll be all right. Um, let's just save these before we forget. Heavy. All right. So in your settings under prints, the bottom layer counts. Uh, four should be fine is like the the sweet spot any more than that and you're overdoing it um, but I see like I don't the one that's rounded up with the lip on it is easier to scrape um, I prefer when I make these to just mesh them together and it makes so much more sense with this skate to do it all right so let's pull these guys out of here so we can load them back up All right, so once I've got it all here, important to look at it top down, make sure nothing is exceeding the edges. And then a lot of people like to uh, look at it through the build to see if anything touches. I don't understand that. Keep it top down and just look at all the places where there could be touching. All right, so when we got everything all oriented on the build plate here, nothing's overlapping. We are going to slice. Doesn't matter you have everything selected. I like to select it all so that it shows up in the preview when you see it on your printer. It doesn't matter at all though. Um, I have turned off the volume. If you would like to see how much resin you are using, you can turn that back on in your settings. Well, it's automatically on. I greatly prefer, I recently switched to this, to not seeing the volume. It's not going to change if I'm gonna print it or not. Uh, obviously, I should know whether or not to to hollow something out. See how instantaneous the slice was? Normally these slices were taking like five minutes, 10 minutes, sometimes like 12 minutes. Right, we saved, this is super important with, uh, I'm gonna make this note while this thing's writing the files. We want to save like I did earlier, rather than you just saw there, the file that we just saved that's about to go to the printer. When I first started, I used to wanna save all of those files, these final print builds in case I'd wanna use them again. That is less common. You're not gonna be just be reprinting. It's sad to know. Each time you prep a build plate, it's probably the last time you're gonna use that, first and last. But it doesn't have to be the first and last time you use the model, right? The, the, the leg may fail. So what we're gonna do is, rather than keeping the files that are on this flash drive, I just delete them whenever they start to fill up. I make sure to always, always save when I finish putting supports on something. All right, so that's everything on supports. I wanted that video to be a lot faster, but it isn't, and so be it. Please like and subscribe for more 40K 3D printed content.